great suit, they don't buy suits. You don't market to people who aren't buying what you're selling. Um, similarly, at that time with only three design companies, everyone got crazy. And no one would talk to one another. They got hyper competitive. They cost kind of one another to get the jobs. It was, it was horrible. So finally, we got a little bit smarter about all this. We moved to Vancouver. It was in 2003, and we basically went between the offices. Um, you know, there were a few different reasons we picked Vancouver. First of all, I'd been here before, so it, it worked. It was very easy. It was easy to get back and forth. We didn't want to move to an American city, and we certainly didn't want to move to Calgary. Um, <laughs> sorry, Calgary. Um, but, but on top of this, um, we felt that there was something really exciting in Vancouver. And I'll talk about that more in a moment, but we just felt this was a place where we could really sit down and have a solid organization. Um, my theory, and then I could be completely wrong, but I really believe this strongly, is that you don't become a better skier by skiing with people who are as good as you. You feel good about yourself because you're better than them. What you want to do is find people who ski just a little bit better than you ski because then you have to get better and you're always challenging yourself. I think the same thing happens but it is much stronger in, in the creative fields in that when you're around those people, not only are you challenging yourself, when you see someone else do something awesome, you think, damn, I wish I would have done that, but more than that, that you're around the discussion and the energy and the activity. And Renee, who was one of my, my instructors in fourth year painting, talked about the gap that would happen after leaving art school and not having that group of people that you could share ideas with and so on. And being in Prince George, I really felt that in a very strong fashion. That that ability to bounce ideas around uh, or off of other people is is so incredibly useful. And part of why I love working in a design studio is that you do get to share these ideas and influences and so on. I think that if you want to be a great designer, New York is probably a really smart place to go. Um, if you want to run a startup, I think Silicon Valley is a really intelligent move, even though the real estate is really expensive. If you want to be an actor, I, I gather Los Angeles is probably a smart call. Um, I know there are exceptions to this rule. There are people who work in relative isolation, in weird spots, and do really, really well by it. My, my general hunch is that they are the exceptions. And a lot of those people have gone to a place, the, the epicenter of the activity, and kind of learn certain things and build connections and then moved out and been able to use those elsewhere. Um, the, the analogy one startup fellow mentioned once that I really loved is that it doesn't matter how good a surfer you are, if you don't have a wave, you can't surf. So you do need to get around that swarm of activity. The part of why I'm so excited about Vancouver, right now in particular, is, is when I leave Vancouver. So I was in New York last week and I ended up in this shop with the people I was with were from Austria and uh, they had never been to Vancouver. And the manager of the shop said, you're from Vancouver, wow, lucky. And, and I thought he was kind of being a jerk about it. I thought he was doing this like, oh, that's a beautiful place, you know, buy our stuff. Uh, but in fact, no, he went on like a, about a two minute pitch for Vancouver. It's just like Austria, you have mountains all around, the city is so close to sports, you know, and there's gonna be in New York doing a pitch for Vancouver. Um, but more than that, it's, um, we've recently been working with BC Film, and it's really exciting looking at what they're doing and the activity that happens here. Um, Vancouver River is probably being the third largest production area in North America for film. Um, the, the activity that's happening around groups, as we're looking at this, like Digital Domain, Pixar, all these organizations that are setting up shop and have within the last few years. Um, but, but more than that, when you start looking at Microsoft having offices here, so, and, and if you talk to people from Microsoft, what they comment on is that Microsoft doesn't have an office here for Canadians. What they're trying to do is get around American immigration policy, which limits their ability to get talented people from around the world. So Microsoft uses this as a place to pull people to because they're only really a short distance from Redmond. Um, if, if you're walking around our neighborhood in Gastown, you have the folks like the, the Boot Up Labs people that are putting on events all the time. Um, you have the cause and effect people that are really big on Vancouver and pushing things. The GDC that's highly active and putting on events all the time. Um, and, and as you're running around, you have all these small shops that are doing anything from gaming and content creation to digital design and the whole spectrum. So there really is some great stuff going on here. And every time I come back, I think I don't want to leave again. Um, I don't think it's without its problems. The most notable one for us is that it is not a particularly um, mature design market. It's very hard to sell design here, uh, which is kind of strange. Um, Frank Palmer from DDB noted that he runs a, uh, a, a large cannery. It's a fish packing plant. 
and this was about a decade ago, he said, um, the fishing is really bad in Vancouver, so you go to Toronto and you go to LA and you do your fishing there, then you bring it back here to do the work. And, and I, I still feel like we have an easier time sometimes selling outside of Vancouver than we do within Vancouver. Um, the thing that I love about it, though, is that it's still so small that you can pretty much call anyone in town at any company and have a conversation with them. And so let's say um, Will from Mod 7 is a great example of someone we keep getting together with all the time, study here as well. Um, and then we're sharing how our, our approaching building, what clients are difficult to work with, how to get around different challenges, how we're growing our companies. And, and there's so many of those people that are willing to share that stuff openly, which is so different from what we experienced in the smaller community yet. When I was in um, first year, I think it was Wendy Fouquet, or it was possibly not a blank, asked us to draw a room in our house. I lived with my grandmother. My grandmother's house was very, very boring. She had a lot of drywall, and then she had some brick. And uh, it was a simple enough project, right? Like draw, draw one drawing in one room, no big deal. Um, but I, I was committed to making the best drawing I could. And so I, I sat down the television was on the other side of the room, which was playing much music on TV. And, and uh, my grandmother would walk down and watch The Young and the Restless, so I knew what was going on there, the important stuff. And then, then I'd do this drawing, and I worked on it so hard, and I, I started by looking at this one brick, and I drew that brick, and I filled it in perfectly, and analyzed it, and I moved on to the next brick, and by the end of the weekend, I had drawn about 20 bricks. So I have a drawing that large, I had composed that much of the drawing. Um, you know, very difficult at that point to pull it back and go, you know, I'm going to make this a quick gestural thing, screw it. Sunday night at 10 o'clock, it's very difficult to pull the rest of the drawing in. Um, I feel this is an incredibly common affliction for all of us who do creative things. Um, why is it that we end up at the 11th hour scrambling like mad and racing across town? You know, I, I've done this so many times that getting into my business partner's shitty station wagon that was rusted and falling apart, and racing across town to get the RFP and out of the proposal for the RFP. And, and I think it, it's not laziness, I think what it is is we get really, really excited. And so we just concentrate on things that we fall in love with. It's, we start selecting type, and we start looking at textures and ideas, but we do that prematurely. We do it before we really know what the bigger picture stuff is. And I, we did this at Smash Lab for some time as well. We would meet with a client, get really excited about what they were doing, have a lot of really in-depth discussions, and when we came back to the office, we get to work, and we would bust our butts to make what seemed like the smartest decision, our set of decisions. And after weeks or months of working on this, we'd come back with this pristine package solution, and we'd show it to them, and that's when it would crash, because they didn't like certain things, or they, certain ideas just didn't fit for them. And, and so as a result, um, we were really frustrated because we'd spent all the money, and all the time it was all gone. And now we had to rip this thing apart. And this was a little bit like, ripping a motor out of a Honda that's complete and pushing it into a Ford. It's, it's not that easy to take this completely finished thing and move the pieces around. A uh, fellow I met, the tech lecturer at Howe, he would talk about the idea that if you limit your ideas to one minute ideas, it's very easy to discard them, but after a month of it, that's where the pain comes in. So, what we started to do was pull back from all of that and really look at our processes more aggressively. Um, we started asking our clients what they needed from us. You know, what is it they're actually coming for? Because it's really not visual assets. Um, we started to look at what the user experience of the purchase of design is, which is about the shittiest user experience imaginable. It's a better user experience to go to McDonald's and buy a burger than it is to go to a design company. Because like, you're going to spend like, like, 50 grand is not a lot to spend with a design company. And the design company is all excited, they do the big pitch, they get working and they fall off the face of the map. Or they send you documents you don't know how to interpret. You bring your friends and you ask them, what do they think? And the design studio says, yeah, don't listen to your friends. They're, they're all these weird things. It's just a really hard thing to purchase. And, and meanwhile, your, your whole lifeblood is on the line. You know, a lot of the companies we've worked with, this is every penny they've got, they've leveraged. Like, one of our clients had leveraged on a million dollars out of his family, and he was going down. Those are, those are customers that have a lot riding on what they're doing, and they're really scared. And designers are really good at problem solving, and they're really good at coming up with great ideas. They're really bad at shepherding people through that process, which is so pivotal getting to your, your ideas to actually come to life. 